Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Stallings. You all know me here on YouTube as Marauder X, and as always, I am your host for Operation Recap, and there's a lot of stories today. A lot of information, so let's just jump right into it and get going. First off, the voice actor for Parappa the Rapper wants to do another game. Uh, this all came about when he reprised his role for PlayStation All-Stars, and he is now petitioning to get another game. Um, I wish him the best, because those games were actually really cute and amazing back in the day. Uh, very early on with the, the Music Rhythm franchise. So I do hope that that takes off because that was that was an interesting thing. I thought it was campy at the time. Like, okay, this is... And then I played it and I was like, this is actually really cute. So um, there's a, a link in the article. Go check that out uh, if you want to support uh, Music Rhythm with a rap twist. Uh, next up, the Zelda Oracle games. Um, the Zelda producer says that these games will be available on the 3DS eShop by this summer. That's actually a big deal because those games didn't really get a lot of love and recognition because people said, oh, they're going the Pokemon route. It's seasons and ages and you gotta get both. Great games and the fact that they are going to be available is awesome. Uh, I do love the fact that Nintendo is very, very proactive about keeping their franchises uh, alive uh, in, in digital record format. So that's always a big deal. Uh, so if you have a 3DS and you never got around to playing these games or you did play these games and you just don't have a copy or you want to re-experience them, uh, the summer they'll be out, so just a couple months. Keep an eye out for those. Uh, Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. So fantastic games. Uh, these two stories go hand in hand. Uh, and so this is going to take up a, a fair bit of it. So the, the first bit is the Steam box prototypes can possibly just a couple of months out. Uh, Gabe Newell, uh, founder, head, king of Valve, uh, was doing an interview on the BBC uh, talking about how the, the prototypes could be out in as early as four months or so. Um, for those of you who have not heard what a Steam box is, a Steam box is basically uh, Valve getting into the console market, and I say console market because it is basically a PC that is running exclusively Steam. Uh, Steam, for those of you who aren't big in PC gaming, is uh, arguably good DRM. Uh, it's basically a, a way to incorporate all games into one network easily. Uh, and they do this, it's all digital, you download everything, uh, they kind of give you information on if your system will run it, but uh, that's left up to the publisher. Steam themselves doesn't handle that. But Steam does act as a form of consumer-friendly DRM. And I say friendly, it's, it's, it's questionable. There are people on both sides of the fence. I personally like Steam for what it is. It's a good way just to organize everything. Uh, if you download something on Steam, very similar to like the PlayStation Network or Xbox Live Arcade, if you download something and then you don't have the space for it on your hard drive, you delete it, it still has the record of purchase so you can go back and re-download it again for free because you've already paid for it. Now, the downside to this is if you download it, delete it, and then it's no longer available on the Steam store. Sometimes things get taken, pulled from Steam due to licensing constraints. But the Steam Box is basically an entry-level computer that f hooks up to your TV or computer monitor and functions as a, 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 a budget middleway between console and PC gaming because there's always been a huge divide between those two types of gamers. Uh, it's, it's been like that since the dawn of time. <laughs> so S Steam is trying to revolutionize it by having a budget PC that you don't have to worry about constant upgrades uh, the Steam Box is talked about with upgrades yearly to, to keep tabs on the, the higher-end gaming market. But possibly four months out, uh, there have been rumors that they've, they've actually been in development for a little while. One of those rumors is actually the next half of the story. Uh, XI3's Piston. Now, this was actually shown off at uh, Consumer Electronics Expo uh, CES and one other trade show, I think, uh, as a, a major Steambox prototype. It's a little odd X-type deal. 
huge stats for it. Uh, solid state hard drive ranging anywhere from 128 to 512 gig. Uh, the price for those, however, are very competitive, <laughs> so you are paying a lot for those solid state drives. Uh, 8 gig of RAM and a 3.2 gigahertz processor. This was touted as going to be the baseline for the Steam Box. The downside is, with all these premiums, uh, it is looking at a base price of a thousand bucks. And again, we go back to the it, the Steam Box, and the Steam Box concept was a middle ground. You you don't need a high end gaming PC, but you get better graphics than you would on consoles because consoles generally have lower end hardware. So. This is not a, a good middle ground for uh, XI3. A thousand bucks, a thousand bucks can buy you a, a pretty high-end gaming PC, and it's then it's not regulated to just Steam, which uh, the the piston seems to be PC gaming only. If you spend that much money on a computer, you have all of the other functions the computer has, you know, <laughs> internet, word processing, other forms of programs, that sort of that sort of deal. So. Thousand bucks. That's a, that's a big, big uh, hurdle that they will have to overcome. Also, another hurdle they'll have to overcome is Valve has acknowledged they have had no input, no design, no connection to the piston at all. Never good when a company starts distan distancing itself from your product before it's even out. Mostly because Steam's probably wanting to, to promote their own Steam box a little more. So, hard to say. The last story is possibly the most important that I have for today, um, and probably for the year. The ESA, the Entertainment Software Association, those nice people who were funded and formed right after all of the Senate hearings around the, the original release of Mortal Kombat, talking about violence in video games, it's a self-governing organization that deals with uh, rating video games. They are the people who form the ESRB. They're the people who go forth and make sure you're not buying an inappropriate game for your kids. Now, a lot of people don't know how the ESA and ESRB work. They, they may see the little, little icons on the games, but they just don't pay any attention to it. Well, the ESA is out to fix that. They're actually going to do a massive campaign to educate parents and uh, guardians of small children alike on how the ESRB and ESA work and how you can do a little bit better about making sure you find the right games for your kids. And this comes at a very dark time in game history. Games being one of the newest forms of entertainment medium uh, are constantly under fire. Uh, anytime that there is any sort of tragic event, uh, the, the uh, movie theater shooting the Sandy Hook shooting, things like that. People want to blame video games uh, because it is the newest kid on the block and therefore the easiest target. There's, there's a lot of information that points that video games do not foster violent behavior and violent tendencies like that. Uh, but one of the things that, that people want to, to focus on is making sure that you're not giving a five-year-old Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> Uh, <coughs> or at least if you are, that you're okay with this and that you understand the, the possible ram ramifications of this action. So the ESA is making a huge campaign. Uh, check out the article on that because there's really so much more than I, could, uh, I would be able to go into detail. Uh, the ESA has been one of the strictest governing bodies. They have the best rating system and best control over their own rating system over any other form of entertainment. That includes TV, movies, music, any of the other uh, entertainment industries do not have as strict standards as the ESA. So the fact that they are still being as proactive about this as they are is amazing. So more power to them, and I will support them in any way, shape, or form that I can because, you know, education and knowledge are key. Uh, that has been Operation Recap for this week. It has been a slightly longer episode. Uh, I do apologize for that, but like I said, there was a lot of news coming out today. Uh, check out the articles below. Uh, your question for the day, how do you guys feel about game ratings? Do you think that they're worthless? Do you think that people need to pay more attention to them? Or is there some middle ground? Or is there something that the gaming industry can do more or better to make sure 
people are informed. Uh, and, and I'm sure the ESA would love to hear uh, responses to this as well. So uh, give us a, a response down below in the, uh, the questions and comments section, uh, video responses. Uh, let us know what you're thinking. Uh, till then, later everyone.